Hey guys! Today we will design a vintage Paris poster in Procreate. Before we start, you can go ahead and download the bundle for this tutorial and the copyright free photo of the Eiffel Tower. Both links are attached under the video. If you like these tutorials, you can support me and access more Procreate tutorials and brushes in different styles on my Patreon page. You'll find a link to it in the description too. Without further delay, let's start! The dimensions of the poster are 2000 by 2700 pixels. In the end of the video I will show how to make it suitable for Instagram post. Now let's begin with the main object of our design, that is Eiffel Tower. I'll show how to turn a photo into a drawing easily. So I'll insert the photo of the tower, which you can download from Unsplash website through the link under this video. I'll change its size by clicking on this dot, changing one of the dimensions to 2400, and the other one will be changed automatically. I'll drag it up and place it carefully in the center, like this. We can actually check if its peak is centered. For that I'll activate drawing guide and make it maximum size. Let me zoom and make sure I placed it properly, so the axis is exactly in the middle. I will remove the guide. Now we need to remove the background as well. For that let's go to selection, pick automatic and tap on the background to select it all. If your selection doesn't work properly, try to adjust the threshold by sliding to the left or right. If you still have difficulties, you can use the PNG image that I attached under the video. Ok, I better keep these parts. After the background is selected, I'll go to the layer and in the menu I will select clear. The background has been removed. All we have to do is clean it up. I'll use the razor here and also remove this line. The base is ready. Let's work on it. First I'll go to Adjustments and select Hue Saturation Brightness. Desaturate the image. Then I'll open this menu again and this time select Curves. Gamma is highlighted on the right. I will drag the right dot down until here and the left one to the right this way. Ok, this is how it is supposed to look. I'll deselect and duplicate the layer. Make this one invisible and go to modify the one below. In huge saturation brightness, I will reduce the brightness, this way turning the tower into black silhouette. Let's go to the color palette to pick this color at the bottom. I will alpha lock this layer and repaint it by clicking fill layer. Toggle the one on top and change its blending mode to darken. Well, I love this color, but this shade of green is not compatible with my color palette. I also want to make it look less detailed and more like a drawing. And there is a way to do that. We should create a layer above this one and clip it. Select this color on top and fill the tower. Then change the layers mode to vivid light. This is the exact color I wanted to get. And as you see, 
we have less details on the metal surface. I will merge these three layers and create a new one that I will place below. I'll fill it with the first color in the palette for the background. After that create a layer above the tower and select this color in the middle. The selected brush is monoline from calligraphy set. We will draw a few buildings on the foreground. First let's draw a line somewhere here. Tap to make it perfectly horizontal. Then draw another one underneath and also make it perfect by tapping. I'll fill this shape. Grab a razor that is set to monoline. And erase this angle with a line parallel to side of the tower. After that I'll select it in freehand mode. Swipe three fingers down and cut. Let's open the layers and alpha lock this shape to be able to draw inside it. I'll change the color into a darker one and draw a line with an angle this way. Also make it parallel. And fill this shape on the right. If it fills a bigger area, adjust the threshold by sliding the pencil to the left. Now I'm creating a layer below this one and picking this color at the bottom. Let's draw a line like this and fill the shape under it. Then change the color into one above and draw a vertical line this way. Its right side must match with the edge of the roof. I lock the layer and fill the left side of it. If it doesn't work at your end, adjust the threshold more. Well, I think now I can make the tower a bit smaller, because we will need more space on top for the text. I'll also move it a little down. Now it's better. We can add a couple more buildings, here on the left. And on the right, I'll start from here. Pick this color and create a layer below layer 4. I'll draw a horizontal line that will look like the continuation of the roof. Close this shape on the side and fill it. Then change the color into this one and draw a line this way. From this point it will go to the right horizontally. I'll draw one more horizontal line, move it a little up. And fill. The last building will be located on the layer above this one. I'll grab this dark shade. My monoline is set to minimum size. Let's draw a short vertical line here. Then make an arc.
I'll edit it quickly. And I'll finish the roof by drawing two horizontal lines. One from this point. And another one from here to the left. I'll fill it and fix the angles quickly. Just want to make them sharp. After that I will create a layer under the roof and grab this color at the bottom. Let's make a vertical line here. Then draw a horizontal one and drag the color. I'll alpha lock the layer and select this color in the middle. Draw a vertical line here. Ok, maybe I will move it a bit to the left. And fill the left side with the color. After that go to the layer with the roof and alpha lock it too. I'll select this color and draw an arc on this side that must match with the vertical one here. And I'll add a short vertical line on top. Fill the left side of the roof shape. Ok, the drawing got some volume. We can add some details. I'll grab this color on top and monoline is already selected. I'll just change the size to 5%. Create a lay above this one and clip it. Start drawing lines parallel to the roof side from here. I'll draw a few of them that can be adjusted if needed. Now we can duplicate this and with magnetics I'll move them to the left. Duplicate one more time and move. This amount is enough. I will merge all three layers. Duplicate this layer. Lock this one and repaint it into this dark color. Go to transformation and tap a few times here to move it slightly to the right. I also want to add the details on the roof of this building. These layers can be merged. I'll create a new one above this layer. Pick the color from here. Let me set the size to 12% and draw a horizontal line here. I will erase this tip on the right. Then change the size to 5%. Create a lay above the roof. 
and clip it. Let's draw a few arcs on the left side. They will start from this line and go down this way. Alright, I will adjust its look. Then go and duplicate this layer. Move it to the left. Duplicate again and move. Do the same a few more times. Try to keep same distance between the lines. When they are done, the layers should be merged and duplicated. I'll change the color into this one, alpha lock the layer and fill it. Then go to transformation and move it to the right just a tiny bit. After that I'll merge these two layers. Grab a razor and pick my grungy texture that you will find under the video. This brush is included into the retro brush set available on my Patreon for the retro coffee poster video tutorial. I will adjust the brush size and erase these lines partially. On some areas I will erase the line completely and on others only a little bit. Also try in different sizes. Don't hesitate to undo your action if you don't like how it looks, because texture brushes are sometimes unpredictable and you may need a few tries to make it work properly. I'll erase here a little more. And now let's do the same on this layer. I will start erasing from top. What we are doing right now is trying to achieve a retro look this way. Let me increase the size and make a stroke here. This is too much, let me undo. I will erase here slightly. That's it. I'll now pick the color we used for the background and select same texture but as a brush. Let's merge all layers for this building. Create a layer above and clip it. I will apply the texture carefully and find the best look, not too intense. Well, this is fine. Before adding this texture on the second building, I want to add a cast shadow on it. For that I'll grab this color at the bottom, merge these layers. Create a layer on top and clip it. Let me select monoline. And here I will repeat the shape of the neighboring building. The size can be low. First I'm drawing a short line, then an arc. and some tiny random curves that transform into a vertical line. I 
I'll close the shape and drag the color into it. Open the layer, set the blending mode to multiply and opacity to 44%. Now we can work with the texture. I'll merge layers for these two buildings. Create another layer above and clip. Pick this color on top and texture brush. I'll make a couple of sketchy strokes on the roof. And here I want to add more texture, because we didn't make this roof detailed. Let's also apply it on the wall. I'll use different size and pressure. Try to apply it moderately and redo it as many times as you wish, until you are fully satisfied with how it turned out. Well, mine are ready. I'll merge these layers. And we can actually merge these two. Now let's work on the background. I'll first create a layer here and pick this color from the lower side. Go to Selection, pick Freehand option, tapping on the edge above this roof. Then I'll tap at some distance from it on the right. Go up. Continue creating this random shape consisting of vertical and horizontal lines that are created automatically when we simply tap. I will change the height and width to get this natural look for faraway building silhouettes. Of course, architecture in Paris is more various and complicated. You can draw a dome, for instance, or some other shapes like triangles. Behind the tower, I will just draw a horizontal line, because it won't be seen anyway. And from here, I will continue tapping to create the rectangular shapes of different sizes. Paris is really a very beautiful city, with unique style in the architecture. I loved it there. And if I could, I would definitely go to visit it once again. Let me tap a few more times and I reached the opposite side of the canvas. We can close the shape at the bottom to be able to fill it. Instead of drawing another row of buildings, I'll duplicate this one. Go to the one below, alpha lock it and fill it with this color on the side. Let's go to transformation and with magnetics I will drag it up. Then flip horizontal. We can also change it in freeform mode. I'll move it to the left and stretch to the right side a little. You can modify it in your own way. Just make sure that this row doesn't look very similar to the front one. Alright, I did it. And now I'll merge them. Pick the color from the background. Create a new layer and clip it. The texture brush has already been selected before. I'll apply it on the buildings, mostly on the lighter row, to make it mix with the background a little. Following same principles as on the foreground layers. When it's done, 
pick and merge the layers. I'll create a layer above this one and also pick this color along with mono line. Let's draw a line this way and fill the area above it. Then I'll go to Gaussian Blur and apply it to blend these two colors of the background. Somewhere around 60% is fine. Now I want to add some foliage on the sides. For that I will first pick this darker color and create a layer above all layers. I have monoline and I'm just drawing a random shape consisting of many small curves. They don't have to be perfect because later we will work on them with textures and eraser. Just try to make as curvy as you can. I'll fill the bigger shape and then the small one. Let's draw something similar on this side. I moved the canvas to the right on purpose, so I don't see what I made on the right side and there is no way I will repeat same shape. I want to make it look different. Let me fill this one and I'll draw one more shape here. Something like this. And I'll fill it too. Now let's check it out. It turned out just fine. Let's create a layer above and change the color into a lighter one. I will draw more curves inside. And fill the resulting shape, including all its small parts. Now do the same on the left side. There is no logic in this pattern. Just draw what your hand wants to draw. Let's fill this. And draw here as well. Fill it. And here comes the last shape. After that I'll grab eraser, set to studio pen. And the size is at 2%. Let's go to the previous layer and make this frame inside repeating the shapes. Of course you can lift your pencil up from the canvas. I just want to make it fast and not spend too much time on it. Because as I already said, we will modify these shapes with the textures. Maybe there is a question in your head, why not use foliage brushes that Procreate has in its library? Or maybe you have some other brushes you created or downloaded. Well, of course you can use them if you wish. But if you watched my other tutorials or checked my Instagram, 
you might have seen that I rarely use those brushes. They are too realistic. And I always try to add something unexpected and creative to every painting I make, like patterns or textures or their combination. And what makes me happy is when you invent your own creative combinations. I'll do the same on the left side. By the way, when you post your drawings on Instagram and want to be noticed, please make sure you not only use hashtag TettyWorks, but also tag me directly in the post. This way it will stay on my page in tagged posts and I will 100% see it and share. Let me finish erasing. And after that, I'll change eraser to grungy texture. Let's go to the top layer. And erase some areas, mostly on the edges. On this side as well. Then go back to this layer and also erase some edges, so the entire drawing is in harmony with this texture. And since I visited Paris in October, I decided to use these autumn colors for the leaves. After the trees are finished, we can texturize the Eiffel Tower. I'll use same eraser, just go to the required layer and apply it on the right side. Let's make the brush low size and start working from top. We can make it bigger and move down this way. Don't hurry, make sure the texture is applied exactly the way you want. I'll continue on this part of the tower and also erase here, on the lower part. I want to apply it more on top. Now I like it. Time to pick this color and select this texture brush. Let's create a lay above this one. And I'll draw something looking like clouds. Again, if you think it's too much or you don't like the shape created with the texture, you can undo by tapping two fingers. I want this texture to be subtle but still visible. So I'm changing the size and applying different kind of pressure.
fine. Now let's add the text to turn our cityscape into poster. Here I will write the name of the city. Select it and open the settings menu. I'll change the font into Hoefler. Make all letters capital and also change the size and kerning. Let me place it like this, in the center. Before adding more text, I want to insert the texture overlay that comes in the bundle for this tutorial. As you see, it doesn't fit the canvas size, but we can fix it easily. In freeform mode, I'll turn on magnetics and snapping. And I'll drag all four middle dots to the sides until the edges are highlighted with yellow. It doesn't look very pretty, but we can fix it the following way. First alpha lock the layer and fill it with the current color. Since the texture has no background, it will look this way. Next step is to change the layer's blending mode to linear burn or multiply. It also works fine. You can try both and pick one you like better. Let's create a layer buff and pick mono line. The size is at minimum. Let me move it closer and draw a horizontal line like this. Then I'll draw a vertical line from this point on the left. Let me match the angle. After that I'll duplicate the layer Flip one of them horizontal and vertical. I will zoom and match these two lines to make a perfect angle of 90 degrees. We got this frame. Let's merge these two layers and now we can add more text. Well, let me try to move this word a little up on the blue area. So I'm on a layer below the paper overlay. And I'm clicking add text. Writing the phrase that belongs to Audrey Hepburn. Paris is always a good idea. I'll select the text and change its color into this one. Let me move it down and I'll start changing the properties. Let's pick the font. This one that is called Dido. I'm making the letters capital and changing the size. Let's try 15.3. And for kerning, I'm writing 22.9 in this bar. I'll place it here.
well, not much left to be done. Let's pick this color on top and create a layer below this one. To draw the birds, I'll be using the brush that is called Artist Script. It can be found in the free All-Star brush set distributed by Procreate. I'm drawing a simple bird shape. Let me make it smaller. And I'll drag it to the blue area, so it's more visible. Well, let me do this. I'll go to the layer with the sky and drag it a little down in freeform mode. Yes, now that's better. We can see the bird. I will make it even smaller and rotate a little. Let's draw another one below. So the vintage travel poster is ready, but if we post it on Instagram as it is, it will be cropped. What I usually do in this case is I copy canvas and paste it. Then I click on canvas and select crop and resize. In the settings I will change the first dimension to 2000 and 200. Click done. Ok, let me keep only this layer visible. And I'll place it in the center using snapping option. Now when posting on Instagram we only need to click on those arrows to keep the original ratio. I will undo it. And at this point our Paris poster is ready. If you like this tutorial, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and tag me in your Instagram posts. You can also support me on my Patreon page, where you can access more tutorials and Procreate brushes. Thank you for watching and see you soon!